planetary life cannot exist without photosynthesis but there is no way we can alter something that significant or can we hello everyone and welcome to this video presentation about artificial photosynthesis this is an extremely unique process and offers an excellent alternative to our energy demand. When I first researched about it, I had three questions. Why do we need artificial photosynthesis to produce fuel? What is artificial photosynthesis exactly? Can artificial photosynthesis actually work? Because if it does, why don't I already have fuels produced from this process? I will base my explanation around these questions. Quick question. What can neither be created nor be destroyed? The answer is pretty simple. Energy. Modern communities harbor on the foundation of energy and a lot of it. If we compare with the data 50 years ago to today's energy consumption, the differences are simply staggering. However, what is more important is the future. Using the United States as a reference, over two-thirds of our energy is directly consumed from fossil fuels. Most of this energy is end use with over 60 quadrillion BTU units used in the electrical, transport and residential sectors. This means with the growing population, this will grow too. We are facing an energy crisis as fossil fuels will soon run out. However, humanity won't run out of energy. Individuals will. What do I mean by this? Renewable energy is seen as the alternative for fossil fuels. However, renewable energy cannot compete with the continuous supply, stability and the availability of fossil fuels, which means it will be unfeasible in underdeveloped nations. For example, wind and solar energy only contribute to 7% of the total energy consumed in the United States. German Wind Energy Program The leader across the world installed 35 wind turbines in 2019. They needed 1400 per year to meet their targets. 25,000 jobs and billions of dollars were lost. Even in places like India, which has a commendable 37% renewable energy usage to make present renewable energy compete with fossil fuels we need more land which takes away agriculture and reduces biodiversity we need better infrastructure and better batteries to store excess energy we simply do not have the infrastructure to make it feasible for everyone no matter how useful this is in theory Artificial photosynthesis offers to be the futuristic and idealistic solution to all our energy problems. This is because photosynthesis complements fossil fuel combustion. Fossil fuels are basically piggy bank stores of solar energy that was converted to chemical energy by ancient plants and phytoplankton. Therefore, photosynthesis reduces the carbon emissions and its source of energy, sunlight, is infinite relative to fossil fuels. The reason why we do not use plants as the sources of energy for our fuels is because plants are very inefficient when using resources. The reason is pretty straightforward. Plants need a lot of land, fertilizers, and plants use some of the energy for their own metabolism. This is where the artificial photosynthesis comes in picture. 
by harvesting the energy using an artificial and synthetic machinery we can greatly increase the yield it is pretty obvious though that photosynthesis is not that simple to replicate you don't just shine sunlight on water and carbon dioxide to get oxygen and glucose this is what many people believe photosynthesis is this is what photosynthesis actually is astounding isn't it chloroplasts are quite simply small factories that utilize several enzyme pathways systems and carry out the process in compartments even obeying the laws of thermodynamics and quantum mechanics while virtually producing no waste and having the process be renewable this is nature's greatest achievement born out of billions of years of evolution revolutionizing this will be a challenge is an understatement there are various approaches to this with theoretical concepts emerging as early as 1912 in 1998 john turner and oscar kasselev developed the first artificial leaf a photoelectrochemical system with 12.4% efficiency now let's look at photosynthesis in photosynthesis photocatalytic water splitting is the main mechanism to produce hydrogen which indeed results in energy production nature stores this hydrogen as nadph which is made into biomass using carbon dioxide the readjustment of bonds using light energy to produce an energy rich compound that has chemi potential energy is the cornerstone of photosynthesis plants do this using chlorophyll whose core magnesium moiety has a sole electron in its octet when interacting with the photon from sunlight it forms an exciton think of an exciton as a little battery next challenge is delivering this exciton to the reaction system in plants the exciton travels through a quantum mechanic process called as superposition superposition needs a specific condition that is called as coherence which is facilitated by enzymes i know i know all of this sounds super complicated but think of this as two processes which are essential to photosynthesis the first one exciton formation and the second one exciton delivery so the particle which is energy rich can go and split water to produce hydrogen Scientists designed a photovoltaic cell using semiconductors so we can simulate excitons. However, the second step is the challenge. Catalysts aren't easy to procure. In 1998, we used a platinum electrocatalyst and a gallium indium and phosphide semiconductor. Artificial photosynthesis was dubbed a very expensive venture, a failure. This was until 2011. Daniel Nocera's team managed to produce a water splitting system that uses abundant materials like cobalt, nickel, molybdenum and zinc. Currently, Thomas Hanegel holds a commendable hydrogen efficiency record of 19.3% using a crystalline titanium dioxide layer. Now's the question. Why can't I already charge my phone using artificial photosynthesis? Why don't we have this process? producing fuels for us if it is so good this is because there are several fundamental flaws with respect to the system and we are far from the practical application first of all scaling up the system to compete with fossil fuels hasn't even been conceived we have no manufacturing system to mass manufacture these devices because they have not been designed or they have not been optimized for the end user like you and me Furthermore it produces hydrogen which is far from the ideal fuel that you and I can use another unique design flaw is that only light from uv region is utilized meaning that the technology is far from being finished to reach its maximum efficiency artificial photosynthesis has various theoretical advantages it is clean carbon emission free and an energy rich process that uses a source that isn't finite renewable and powerful 
it is a step towards the future. However, the cons are quite logical too. We face same problems as a solar panel. Namely, at the end of the day, artificial photosynthesis uses solar energy. And for that, we need a lot of land and better batteries to counter the volatility of light. Also, hydrogen as an end product is not practical at all. In other words, the technology for artificial leaf that synthesizes fuels for us is still being developed, albeit with several innovations and successes on the horizon. Latest developments suggest major corporations working on adding to this body of knowledge. University of Cambridge is working on a model that produces syngas, a precursor for plastics, medicines, agri-products and still being an alternative fuel. University of Waterloo is working on cuprous oxide catalyzed artificial leaf that produces methanol as an alternative fuel. Whoever produces the first commercially viable artificial leaf, we are in for a major breakthrough that will revitalize our paradigm on energy. Inspiring and enthralling, this is a peek into the exciting future science holds for us.